Let us now listen to the third live Mass on Air at the Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag. This live Mass on Air is possibly made by Mr. Wilson Chua and family of Bitstop Network Services Incorporated for their generosity through iradioportal.com and for the intention of our sick brothers and sisters and to all Filipinos working abroad. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Magandang hapon po si lahat. Welcome dito sa Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag. To prepare ourselves to celebrate worthily this Mass, we pause for a while, we call to mind our unworthiness, And we ask the Lord for His mercy and forgiveness. All together, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have re- greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, you, my my brothers brothers and sisters, to to pray pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through your human word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, Surely, the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, but because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any one of this. Then Samuel asked Jesse, Are you this, all the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel with the horn of oil in hand anointed David in the presence of his brothers. 
And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He guides me in the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. With your rod and your staff, that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness, rather expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything expo exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please all stand. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man bl blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither he nor his parents sinned. It is so that the works of God might be made best visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Then he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, Yes, it is. But others said, no, he just looks like him. He said, I am. So they said to him, How are your eyes opened? He replied, The man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and told me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went there and washed and was able to see. And they said to him, Where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought 
the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes and washed, and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you have to say about him since he opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. Now the Jews did not believe that he, was, that he had been blind and gained his sight until they summoned the parents of the one who had gained his sight. They asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How does he now see? His parents answered and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. We do not know how he sees now nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he can speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, he would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason, His parents said, He is of age. Question, on, question him. So a second time, they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He replied, If he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was blind and now I see. So they said to him, what did, you, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They ridiculed him and said, You are that man's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we do not know where this one is from. The man answered and said to them, This is what, so, what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from. Yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. It is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and are you trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshipped him. Then Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see might see, and those who do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were there with him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not also blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin, but now you are saying, We see, so your sin remains. But their brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. 
Magandang hapon po muli sa lahat at welcome dito sa Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag. Ang aking ang ibanghelyong aking binasa ay may pagka mahaba no? Sa katunayan, ito ay binubuo ng apat na put isang talata o 41 verses. Ito ay galing sa Ikasyam na kabanata ayon sa Ibanghelyo ayon kay San Juan chapter 9 of the Gospel according to John. At isinalaysay ng ating Ibanghelyo ang tungkol sa isang lalaking bulag mula pagkabata mula nung ito'y isilang na pinagaling ng ating Panginoong Sesus. Isinalaysay dito ang mga sumunod na kabanata sa kanyang buhay kung paano niya hinarap ang mga taong hindi naniniwala na siya ay pinagaling ni Jesus kung paano niya hinarap ang mga pariseyo. Naging controversial ang pagbalik ng kanyang uh, at ang kanyang pag, uh, paggaling no? sapagkat hindi naman bumalik yung liwanag sapagkat he was born blind. Ang kanyang paggaling ay naging controversial sapagkat may mga kakilala siya, may mga kapitbahay at yung nakakita sa kanya na namamalimos na nagsabing, oo, siya nga itong bulag na ngayoy nakakakita na. Pero marami din ang nagsasabing, ah hindi, hindi siya yun, kamukha lamang. No? Yung mga nakakakilala sa kanya na nakikita na mamalimos siya, pero ayaw na maniwala na ito nga yung taong namamalimos na dati bulag na pinagaling ng ating Panginoon. At hindi pa sila kontento. Dinala nita, nila itong taong pinagaling ng ating Panginoon sa mga pariseyo. Ang mga pariseyo ay mga religious leaders sa kapanahunan ng ating Panginoon. At kung ano ang sasabihin ng mga pariseyo, may mga, sabihin na lang natin, no? uh, kunting respeto mula sa mga tao sapagkat sila ay mga leaders, mga religious leaders. Pero nung dinala nga ang taong ito at nalaman nila na pinagaling ito no, sa araw ng Sabbath, sabi nila, ang taong gumawa nito ay hindi galing sa Diyos. Ang taong gumawa nito ay makasalanan. Bakit nasabi ng mga pariseyo yan? Sapagkat ang mga pariseyo, very strict sila doon sa tinatawag nilang pagsasabuhay sa batas ni Moses. No? At para sa kanila, yung sampung utos na ibinigay ng Diyos kay Moses, eh, pinadami nila ng pinadami, at nagkaroon na sila ngayon ng batas na ang nagiging kampanya ay kalinisan at kaayusan. Ang kanilang kampanya ngayon ay bumuo ng sistema na ang tinatawag ay purity system. At kapag ikaw, ay nagkasala laban sa batas ng kalinisan at kaayusan, no? ikaw ay makasalanan, ikaw ay dapat parusahan. At para maging malinis at maayos yung law of the Sabbath, para respetuhin ng tao dapat maging maayos, wala dapat mga taong gumagawa ng mabibigat. Pero nung ang ating Panginoon ay magsimula ng kanyang public ministry, ng kanyang pang, mga pangaral, may mga pang, pa, uh, pam, pam, uh, gawaing pagpapagaling ng gamot ang ating Panginoon, no, hindi lamang sa mga ordinaryong araw, kundi sa araw ng Sabat. At para sa ilang mga Hudyo at para sa mga Pariseyo, ito'y paglabag sa batas and therefore makasalanan ng ating Panginoon. No? Kung kaya ang paglapit din ng ating Panginoon sa mga taong may kapansanan, may sakit, ay paglabag din sa kanilang batas ng kaayusan at kalinisan. Sapagkat ang taong may sakit, ang taong may kapansanan, para sa kanila, sa kanilang lipunan, ay marumi. At kapag ikaw ay guro, ikaw ay malinis na tao, hindi ka dapat nakikihalubilo sa mga ito. Ang ating Panginoon ay nakikikain sa mga makasalanan at ang mga makasalanan ay marurumi. Kung kaya para sa mga pariseyo, ang ating Panginoon 
no? ay isang makasalanan at hindi gawain ng makasalanan na nakakapagpapagaling na may sakit. Mga kapatid, lampas na po tayo ng uh, git, kalagitnaan ng panahon ng kwaresma. Sa mga susunod na linggo, ang ating pagbasa ay tutukoy sa mga paghihirap ng ating Panginoon. No? Ang kanyang mga pagsasakripisyo hanggang sa pagdating ng Simana Santa kung saan ang mga pagbasa ay uh, dadalhin tayo sa pagpapako sa krus ng ating Panginoon at ng kanyang kamatayan. Bakit nga ba nauwi sa pagpapako sa krus at kamatayan ng ating Panginoon? Ito'y dahilan sa mga akusasyon ng mga pariseyo na gusto nga nilang parusahan ng ating Panginoon at ang parusa para sa isang katulad ng ating Panginoon na tinuturing nilang rebelde, matigas ang ulo, no? na ang kanilang mga observances sinusuway ng ating Panginoon. Sila ang nagrarali upang ang ating Panginoon ay ipakos sa krus. At nagtagumpay sila. Maraming mga tao na dahilan sa mga peking balita ng mga pariseyo na ipamukha nila sa mga tao na ang ating Panginoon ay isang makasalanan at malaki ang kanyang kasalanan sapagkat siya ay nagre-rebelde at dapat lamang ipako siya sa krus. Ano to para sa atin? Ang ating Panginoon ay tinuring na liwanag ng sanlibutan. Siya ay dumating upang maging daan ng kaliwanagan hindi lamang ng mga mata ng mga bulag kundi ng kaisipan ng mga tao tungo sa kung ano ang katotohanan. At nung tayo bininyagan, inatas din sa atin ang papel na to na maging liwanag ng sanlibutan. You are the light of the world, no? the salt of the earth. Ika nga sa kanyang mga alagad. Subalit paano natin magawa ang misyon ng kaliwanagan kung sa ating kaisipan, kung sa ating mga tinatanggap araw-araw at pinapaniwalaan, hindi naman yung totoo na nanggagaling sa Diyos. Ang humuhubog sa ating kaisipan at puso ng ating pagkatao minsan ay mga peking balita na akala natin ay mga totoo. At kapag ito ay kung naging kumbinsido tayo sa mga lumalabas ng balita na to, nakakapamili tayo ng mga peking tao, ng mga nahahalal natin, mga peking mga leaders, puro pangako, pero ang kanilang sinsiridad na maglingkod ay wala. Kung titingnan natin ang ating kapanahunan sa social media, laganap ang kasunungalingan, maraming peking balita, at kahit nga laganap ng peking balita, ang dami rin mga Pilipinong tumatanggap nito bilang totoo. Halimbawa na lamang kung ano ang nangyayari sa ating simbahan, sa ating lipunan. Marami ang nagsimba, nagsisimba. Nung, Holy, nung Ash Wednesday, maraming nagpalagay ng abo, ng krus na abo sa noo. Pero kumbinsido sila na dapat lamang ibalik ang death penalty. At nung nanalo sa mababang kapulungan na maraming mga congressman ang umuo na ibalik ang death penalty, maraming nagpapalakpakan at natutuwa at sinasabing dapat lang sa ating bansa. Yun ba ang taong hinubog ng katotohanan ng ating magandang balita ng Diyos? Sapagkat kung bukas tayo sa liwanag ni Kristo sa kanyang mga pangaral, sasabihin na meron tayong Ten Commandments at napapaloob sa Ten Commandments, huwag kang papatay. Pero dahilan sa maraming matatalino sa ating kapanahonan at ang kanilang mga pagdidibate, ang kanilang mga argumento, no, ay sinasabing dapat lang na sa sitwasyon na maraming ganito ang kampanya natin ay kalinisan, kaayusan, ipapairal ito. Pero kagaya ng mga pariseyo na hindi nila matanggap ang aral ng ating Panginoon na kahit na ang ating Panginoon nilabag niya ang batas ng Sabbath sapagkat para sa ating Panginoon yung batas ng Sabbath yung essence of the law 
ay gawain ng mga pariseyo upang kontrolin ang tao. Nakapag gusto nila ang tao na maging maayos, no? Ando yung pananakot na ang sabat na ginawa ng Diyos, dapat wala tayong gawin at ang mga taong may mabibigat na gawain sa araw na to, lumabag nito, makasalanan. So pinamumukha nila. Pero ang sabi nga ng ating Panginoon, dapat yung batas ay ginawa para sa tao. Hindi yung tao, ififit natin ngayon doon sa batas. Noon yung tao, dapat ang kanyang gawain ay upang kung ano yung batas na hindi naman minsan yung tinatawag nating diwa ng batas, the essence of the law, hindi naman gaanong naiintindihan. Para sa ating Panginoon, mas mahalaga ang kaligtasan ng tao. Kung kaya kahit man sa kultura nila, sa lipunan na kinalakhan niya, na bawal para sa isang malinis ang dumamay sa mga makasalanan, sa mga may sakit, no? ginawa ng ating Panginoon sapagkat para sa Kanya ang Kanyang misyon, mas mahalaga ang kaligtasan ng tao. Mga kapatid, ang hindi natangga ang natanggap nung taong pinagaling ng ating Panginoon, ika nga, no? is an amazing grace from God. Kung familiar kayo sa kantang Amazing Grace, may bahagi doon na sinasabing, I was once blind, but I now see. Isang malaking himala ang nagagawa ng Amazing Grace of God. Kapag ang grace ng God ay tinanggap natin, hindi lamang healing no, ng ating physical uh, infirmities o insufficiencies, kundi healing na bubuksan din ang ating pananampalataya. Ang contrast nito sa mga pariseyo, mga leaders na sila, malulusog ang kanilang mga mata, pero they failed to see in Jesus how the amazing grace of God is working in Him para itong biyaya na to ay maging daan ng kaligtasan ng katubusan ng sanlibutan. Sa ating pagparito sa hapon na to, sa banal na misa, hopefully, ang liwanag ng Diyos will be our amazing grace to na ang liwanag dala ang katotohanan ng pangaral ng Diyos ang magdadala sa atin sa biyaya ng kaligtasan sapagkat ang ating pinananiwalaan at ang nagpapalalim sa ating pananampalataya ay ang turo ng ating Panginoon na hindi nagliling lang, no? hindi twisted facts, hindi fabricated lies, kundi ang mga hamon ang maturo ng ating Panginoon na nagdadala sa isang bulag sa kagalingan. Nawa ang liwanag ni Kristo ay ma-embrace natin para pagdating natin, pag natin sa ating bahay, sa ating komunidad, we too beca- have become the light of our family. We are bearer of truths. We are bearer of the amazing grace of God. And if the amazing grace of God is working in us and with us, we become a blessing to others and we become instruments of salvation, redemption, no? and a, safe, uh, a life that is safe for others. Tumayo na tayo ngayon, ihayag natin ng ating pananampalataya. Sabay-sabay tayo. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, was conceived by the power the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us beseech the Father for the light of personal and committed faith, so that through our good works, His name may be glorified, we pray. 
Lord, let your light shine upon us, that the church may humbly acknowledge her own weaknesses, so that strengthened by Christ, she may be faithful to her mission to be the light of the world, we pray. Lord, let your light shine upon us, that our spiritual and political leaders may see their own limitations and sins, so that they may prove to be effective and compassionate guides to others, we pray. Lord, let your light shine upon us, that the blind and the handicapped may be effectively assisted by both government and non-government agencies to lead meaningful lives, we pray. Lord, let your light shine upon us, that the eyes of those blinded by honor, wealth, and sense of superiority may be opened by the Lord and that they may humbly recognize their reliance on the Lord and their fellow human beings, we pray. Lord, let your light shine upon us, that we may renew our commitment to justice and peace and raise our voices in behalf of the poor and the downtrodden, we pray. Lord, let your light shine upon us. We include in our prayers the intentions of those people who are asking for our prayers, for the intentions of those people whom we promise to pray for. We pray to the Lord. Lord, let your light shine upon us. We pause for a while in the silence of our hearts. We lift to the Lord our own personal and particular intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, let your light shine upon us. Father, Jesus our Lord, open the eyes of the blind. Open our eyes to recognize his presence, especially in the least of our brothers and sisters, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Brother, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, He has led the human race that walked in darkness 
into the radiance of the faith and has brought this rather has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin to the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children therefore all creatures creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration and we with all the hosts of angels cry out and without end we acclaim You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewful, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Socrates, our Bishop, Elmer, his assistant bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her oldest spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. We pray as Jesus taught us.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to our apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Need. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Listening to the live mass on air at the minor basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, and the celebrant for this live mass on air is Reverend Father Greg Gregory O. P. Let us pray for Mr. Wilson Chua and family of Bitstop Network Services Incorporated for their generosity through iradioportal.com, and for the intention of our sick brothers and sisters, and to all Filipinos working abroad. This live mass on air is for the intention and prayer for the soul of Peregrina de la Cruz who passed away yesterday. This is the grandmother of Ken de la Cruz Rafols. For you who are listening to this radio and watching through the internet, the live broadcast of this holy sacrifice of the Mass being celebrated in this shrine of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, may I invite you to pray with me this spiritual communion in the act of charity. 
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Prayer for an act of charity. O oh my God, I love you above all things with all my heart and soul because you're all good and worthy of all love. I love my neighbor as myself for the love of you. I forgive all who have injured me and ask pardon of all whom I have injured. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Ito po ay isang paalala ng Radyo Manawag. Minamahal namin mga kapatid, kami po ay taos pusong nagpapasalamat sa patuloy niyong pagtangkilik sa Radyo Manawag. Ngayon po ang misang ito ay para sa mga may sakit at lalong-lalo na yung hindi makapunta sa simbahan dahil sa kanilang karamdaman at kapansanan, bagamat pilay at hindi sila makalakad dahil sila nasa higaan. Pero ang misang ito ay para sa lahat din po. Nga lang, mahalaga po na tayong walang sakit, walang karamdaman, makinig tayo pero kinakailangan po na pumunta pa rin tayo sa simbahan mismo parang tayo ay maka physically makapagparticipate kayong po na mga may sakit kung gusto po ninyo magkomunyon lapitan lang po ninyo ang parokya ang parish priest at the same time ang parokya ng manawag parang humingi kayo ng komunyon at kayo'y bibigyan ng komunyon sa inyong mga tahanan maraming salamat po sa pamagitan ng radyo ito kami po ay nakakapaglingkod sa inyo God bless us all. Be not afraid. I have made you. I have saved you. I have called you. I love you, be not afraid, be not afraid, when you pass through waters that rage, I am with you, in the rivers you shall not drown walk through the fire and its flames will not consume you for I am God not afraid I have made you I have saved you I have called you you are Precious to me and I love
please stand. Let us pray. O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, that a splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for some announcements. The Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag will be on May 3, 2017, third Wednesday of Easter season. Novena Masses will begin on April 24, every hour from 5 a.m. to 12 noon. There will be a Novena Mass at 4 in the afternoon. We invite you to participate in the said Novena Masses. If you wish to sponsor one or several Masses, you may approach the personnel at the religious store at the ground floor at the museum. Novena Masses will be aired over Radio Dominico ng Manawag, 102.5 FM. For live streaming, you may also search for Radio Dominico in the internet. The Novena booklet in honor of Our Lady of Manawag is now available at the religious stores. You may now buy your copy for the revised edition in English. Every Friday throughout this Lenten season, there will be a way of the cross at 4 p.m. to be followed by the Mass. You are all invited. Another announcement. In line with the upcoming observance of the Holy Week and the celebration of the Summer Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, we would like to inform you that the parking area inside the Basilica will be closed. This will make way for the preparation, maintenance, and improvement of the Basilica. We apologize for the inconvenience. Thank you. Please all stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of death. And bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our Mass is ended. We go in peace. Thanks be to God. Be blessed tayo ng mga may sakit natin mga kapatid at ng inyong religious articles. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Let us pray. God our Almighty Father, by your blessing you give us strength and support in our frailty. Turn with kindness to our sick brothers and sisters. Feed them from all illness and restore them to good health. To the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag. So that in the sure knowledge of your goodness, they will gratefully bless your holy name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Para sa pagbabasbas ng inyong religious articles. In memory of the mysteries of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, to the honor and glory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Christ, Mother of the Church, Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, may rosaries, candles, crucifixes, images of our Lord, images of Our Lady, prayer booklets, scapulars, stampitas, and all other religious items, be blessed and made holy in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.